Hey guys, welcome back to Growing and Crowing. It's okay. It's officially spring on the farm and we have had the weather to prove it. We've been from 80 degrees, 80 degrees to thunderstorms rolling in and we've got some flowers blooming, apple trees are blooming. We've got the rhubarb patch looks great and uh, we finally got some potatoes in. So I've been doing some video the last week or so that I'll share with you today about what we've been up to. This little girl was born today to a first time mom and uh, she's doing really well with it. Here you go. Yeah. You're all right. So I hope you um, enjoy the video today of all the things that we've been up to. Every year it seems like I'm a little bit behind on when things are supposed to be in the ground and uh, usually have some cleanup yet to do from the previous fall. Uh, the garden tends to get wild after July and my business gets super busy in the fall so I just kind of ignore things until spring when I have a little bit more time. Um, but this year we decided to do our potatoes in our existing garden boxes since we are redoing the main garden area and um, have a lot of work yet to do for that. So I wanted to get those potatoes in the ground since, you know, the old saying goes they should go in on Good Friday and we are, well, just a few weeks beyond that now. So the first thing I needed to do was to clean out the beds, get, all, get rid of everything from last year, and then I wanted to amend the soil in that box just a little bit. Um, I had grown tomatoes and onions in there last year uh, so I just wanted to put in some fresh dirt and some compost um, so I got that and got that tilled in good one thing that I have a hard time with is spending money on dirt I hate to buy dirt especially by the bag loads um, but that's you know usually the easiest way for um, to do it especially for the garden boxes um, we have had in the past we've done our own compost piles and we still do, you know, when we clean out the sheet barn and all that kind of stuff, we'll have a pile of that and, um, you know, kind of flip it and turn it just a little bit. But it's the piles that we do have now need to break down more because they have a lot of straw in them. So I couldn't just use that dirt to, you know, amend, amend the soil on top of this one. So we did have to buy a few bags and uh, it is what it is. It's, you know, it needed it. So that's fine. But man, it's a hard, I have a hard time spending money on dirt. So um, when we do do the large garden area that we're putting in all those hog feeder um, garden boxes, I'll call a local landscaping company and get a, a load of good black dirt for that. So that um, helps justify it to me just a little bit when you're buying a full truck load or a dump trailer load or something just because you get it at a little better price than buying them in all these individual bags. So that's in the works also, but for now, we needed to get these potatoes in the ground. This year we are doing uh, Yukon Gold potatoes again. That is typically one that we find that grows really well and uh, lasts the longest in storage for us. Um, I love red potatoes, so we have done those in the past as well, but because we're doing such a small area of them this year, uh, I just picked one kind and we're gonna we're gonna go with that. So. I have normally, when we plant our potatoes there, it was in our full garden. So I had, you know, in the dirt, a ton of room, didn't have to worry about it, but um, I've never planted them in these garden boxes. So it's a little tighter on space. And um, I believe it's, you know, about a foot apart is what you're supposed to put the seed potatoes. Um, but I had quite a few and honestly, a lot of them barely had little eyes. So I planted a few of them closer together with the expectation that some of them were not going to even come up anyway. So it looks like there's quite a few in there because there is, but uh, I really don't think most of them will come up. And if they do, well, we'll see how they do. We can pull some up early for um, new potatoes and cook them up that way. So um, I got that done. Um, you can kind of see in this video a few of the other uh, garden boxes, that center one to the right of me. Um, was strawberries before and it needs a good refresh start and get some weeds out of there and some fresh dirt and maybe I haven't decided if I'm gonna put strawberries back in there um probably so because it was so nice when we had those it was such a good patch at one point um and then further beyond is the rhubarb 
that uh, is doing really well and I really, really, really need to thin out some of those plants because there's a lot in there. <laughs> but um, every every time I think, oh, I need to do it, well, it should have been done earlier or it should be done later. So that's on my to-do list and usually I'm uh, handing out rhubarb to neighbors and anyone that will take it. <laughs> so um, the other big box that is right next to the greenhouse is one end has that, has asparagus in it. And Aaron would love to fill that entire box with asparagus, but I have planted different crowns and they just don't all come up. So um, right now we just have a tiny little patch on that very end. And um, we get, you know, a handful that we'll put in the fridge until we have enough to cook up, or I usually just eat it raw straight from the garden and it barely makes it into the house sometimes. But um, the other end of that, I'm not sure. I've done sweet potatoes on the other end before. We've done, you know, cabbages and brassicas and that sort of stuff. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna put on that other end. Maybe it'll be simple, something as simple as just um, a flower bed full of zinnias on that one end. So we'll see what I decide to do on that. but. Um, again, that one needs to be, it got it a little, little bit tilled up, but it needs to have some fresh, uh, soil put on top and refreshing that up as well. One other thing that we got done this last week was we weaned the lambs. Uh, typically we wean them around eight weeks and it's kind of a sad little process because they do cry. The mamas cry for a couple of days and, you know, we have them so they can see each other, which I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, they're now in with the hoop shed area and have access to creep and hay, um, you know, full time, but it gets them off their mom, gets them to grow a little bit better that way. And then the moms can start gaining some weight back since they're not nursing uh, those babies anymore too. Another thing I did get done was to do some work in our Heritage Red Raspberry Patch. So this patch is only about two years old, um, so it's not huge or overly congested just yet. Um, but I did want to kind of get in the habit of hopefully keeping it trimmed back. And so um, I was doing some research on how to do that. And basically to dumb it down to where I could understand it, um, the first year canes the berries will grow on the very ends. And so that next, you know, <clears throat> typically early uh, spring, late winter, January to March, um, you wanna start trimming these up and you know, here we are in April and I'm just getting to it. But nonetheless, I wanted to give it a try and see uh, what would happen. So you take those berries off the end or where they were berries last year to clean that up. Um, and then that second year they'll start uh, growing the leaves and stuff off the off the cane into the center and then that will kind of bush out from there um, The third year they're done. So <clears throat> those third year canes you'll want to completely take out and clean up 100% <clears throat> So those are out of there the important thing with you know, like any kind of a fruit tree or something like that You'll want to keep airflow through there. So there's not disease and that sort of thing um, ours are planted up against one of our barns uh, so I don't have access to picking on both sides um, so I kind of have to do a really good job at keeping things at bay as far as not letting it get too out of control to where I can't get to a bunch of it so um, I think in the future we're gonna put up maybe just a little a couple of t-posts and some wire to kind of hold those branches up a little bit but uh, for now, it's not too overwhelming. Um, <clears throat> the Heritage Red Raspberries is an ever-bearing plant, so it actually produces berries twice a year. And I was really surprised at how many berries we got off of it just within these first two years. Um, I believe it's around June is when they are ripe the first time. And uh, it, there wasn't a ton that time around in, in the June um the June picking, but, um, I had a friend that has some as well, it has a nice patch as well. And they offered to come help me or let me pick, uh, some of theirs. So I got some off of them and then, um, come September, man, mine were going crazy and had a ton. Um, I was freezing them and, uh, just to put them up for the winter. And then, um, this past February made some jam out of them and it's by far been the kids' favorite jam that we have, you know, ever made. So uh, definitely something that I'm glad that we put in and uh, I'm excited to have, you know, for years to come. But um, I would love to put in some blackberries or black raspberries, um, but we do have those growing wild out in our timber. So I kind of opted for the red ones that we 
that we don't have access to and uh, I'm sure I'm certainly glad that we did so we were also able to move our cows down to a uh, larger pasture where there's some taller green grass growing and uh, we're always thankful when we were able to kind of get out of hay feeding season and get them on some fresh grass and that sort of thing so we're getting there um last week brought them a pretty good day of storms and uh it's still a little bit early but chase and i went for a quick walk between storms to uh, look for some mushrooms so we did find just a small handful of them and uh, i think they'll really start popping once the weather warms up just a little bit more so Moral mushrooms are one of those things that it's a fun treat um, to have and we do try to get a little bit for my dad every year. I remember um, always going out looking for mushrooms with uh, with him over in my grandpa's timber and stuff. So it's uh, something we always try to get around the first part of May so that we can get, over, get some over to him for his birthday. So um, hopefully there'll be a few more coming on here in the next week or so. Um, after the storm, it was, it was actually really gorgeous and um, of course ended with a rainbow. So that was a good, good end to the kind of craziness of the storm. So um, we had a good week overall and we hope you enjoyed joining us. And um, if, you, if you would hit that subscribe button and like button and come back and see what's going on next week. Have a great week, everyone.